You expect every new car to be better than its predecessor, but in the case of the Hyundai i30, the improvement is so huge, you'll probably see it from outer space. While the previous version was worthy, but a little bit dull, this new model is a car you can buy with your heart as well as your head. In fact, it's one of the best looking small family hatchbacks on the market. Now don't worry, Hyundai hasn't gone all Italian and created a car that's good to look at, but spoilt by numerous foibles, because beyond this stylish tailgate is one of the largest boots in this class. Now it's larger than that of the old i30, and it's actually bigger than on most of its main European rivals. I mean, that's completely swallowed up. And if you want to carry larger items, you can fold down the rear seats. And they lie, look, completely flat. Now, I must point out, it does have a bit of a lip there, which does affect practicality slightly, but I'm going to forgive it for that if I can fit my huge snowboard bag in lengthways. So let's have a go. Well, there you go. It fits, so the lip is forgiven. The i30 is also great for carrying rear passengers. For starters, it's got nice wide rear doors. And once again, I can use my snowboard to illustrate that because I can just slide this big bag out through the gap. There you go. Now I'll just put the seats back and show you how much space we have back here. Right, there we go. Now look at this, right? Absolutely loads of knee room sufficient headroom, and the seat is nice and wide, which means you can carry three people if you need to. And even the middle passenger does have somewhere to put their feet because the floor, well, it's almost completely flat. And handily, there's some door bins as well, a few bottles of water. But what about practicality here in the front? Well, let's see, big bottle. It fits into the side door bin. We've got a couple of cup holders here, a more storage space underneath the centre console. The glove box is a decent size and it's chilled by the air conditioning. And there's a large central cubby as well. And all this is superb if you want to turn your i30 into a mobile drinks vending machine. Do you know what? I think we've gone through all the classic car buy practicality tests and this Hyundai has passed them with flying colours. The i30 also passes the equipment test, as all models get air conditioning, USB input and Bluetooth as standard. However, the best thing about the interior is the way it looks and the way it feels. You've got soft touch materials here on the dash and the top of the doors, and all this helps make the car feel like a quality product. In fact, I'll let you into a little secret, right, because there's a rumour going round that some Volkswagen executives have been overheard talking at a motor show about how good the quality of this car is. And in fact, they said that the Golf could learn a thing or two from it. So if you ever encounter some Hyundai haters, you can always silence the bad snobs by telling them that story. All i30s come with a five-year warranty and are cheap to run, especially this 1.6-litre diesel version, as it can do 76 miles per gallon and is free from road tax thanks to its low emissions. OK, then, so this Hyundai is affordable, but then you kind of expected that, didn't you? The big question is, what's it like to drive? Well, here in town, it's dead easy, actually. All the controls, they're nice and light, and I particularly like the brakes because they're very, very sharp, which is very handy if a child suddenly runs out in front of you to test your reflexes. As for the seating position, it's spot on. There's loads of adjustment in the steering wheel and the driver's seat, and I think that 99.9% .9 of people will be able to get comfy in this car. Actually, that might be a little bit optimistic. Maybe I should refine that to 99.8. The i30 doesn't just impress in town though, it's also at home on the open road. For instance, the cabin, it's well insulated from outside noise. That means that motorway journeys are nice and peaceful. It's also very comfortable. I mean, the ride is a bit on the firm side, but it deals with bumps pretty well. And the trade-off anyway for that is the fact that it goes around corners very well indeed. That said, I'd never describe this car as particularly fun to drive. If you want a car that's going to put a smile on your face on the twisty bits, then you're going to be better off with a Ford Focus. As for the downsides, well, these thick A-pillars create a bit of a blind spot when you're pulling out at junctions. Rear visibility is about as good as that on some supercars. And if you want an automatic version, be warned, it does affect the car's economy.
There are some other issues too. For instance, Hyundai's don't exactly have the best residual values in the world, and you normally expect them to significantly undercut the competition. But this model is almost on a par with its European rivals. That said, it does actually deserve to be because Hyundai have really nailed it with this car. It's good looking both inside and out. It's comfortable, it's easy to drive, it's practical, and it's very cheap to run. And that's why we've decided to name it our Car Buyer Car of the Year for 2012. Enough said.